So as you may have noticed, I've got a ton of gear. I've got no backyard, I've got no garage, I've got eight flights of steps. I have no indoor space to lay out kites. And so today's video, we're gonna get into how do you make it work as an urban kiter while living in a tiny New York City apartment? Cool, so the first thing is storage. I've got things stored throughout the apartment. The first place is my daughter's bedroom, so that's the nursery. I have a large metal gladiator garage storage unit cabinet, and I can fit almost all of my gear in there. Kites, wetsuits, booties. And so that's one of the primary spots. So then I have my surfboard over here, which I catch my daughter playing with when she's not going to sleep. And then underneath the crib, I've got my split boards. I don't use them as frequently, but it's nice to have them there for quick access. The second place I keep things in the apartment is our extra bathroom. We're lucky to have one. We have a shower in there, which we rarely use. And so all of my most frequently used kite surfing equipment goes there. Most used kites, twin tip, foil board, wetsuit. That's just kind of the quick access spot where I put things. The third option, I use the Thule roof box on my car. It's the Force XT XL. It'll fit four or five kites. It'll fit two boards. It'll fit the surfboard, the foil, the pump. Literally everything can fit in there. And if I've got some coverage or I'm not getting direct sun, I'm a little more comfortable leaving my things there. If I've got indoor parking, you know, I'm totally comfortable leaving my stuff there as long as it's not wet. So that's it for storage. Let's talk a little bit about transportation. With eight flights of steps, potentially two, three, five, six, seven blocks to walk to my car from the apartment. And in this case, it's a walk of about three blocks. I've got to think about transportation, and this is where these Ortlieb dry bags come into play. So I use the Ortlieb Extremer. It's a huge bag. It can fit three, sometimes four kites. It'll fit a twin tip sticking out the top, plus all the rest of my gear. But then from here, I can make one trip with almost all of my gear. As a backup, I have a slightly smaller version of the bag that's got rolling wheels if I really need that. And then I mentioned the surfboard bag, but that's a roll top. So it, it can shift in size and I can put my twin tip in there with my surfboard or I can go kind of twin tip and foil, but I can get that over my shoulder while I've got the big dry bag on my back. And that way I can make the trek. The last option, and I don't use this as much, but it's the rock and roller folding cart. I can keep this cart in the back seat of my car. I can unfold it. I can put all of my gear on there. It's good if I've got a long walk to the car or if I'm at a kite spot that just has a huge parking lot and a long walk to the beach. All right, let's talk about how I manage things at the spot. I've got two rules. One, don't get things wet or sandy. And two, definitely don't get things wet and sandy. The first part of the system are those dry bags I mentioned. So keeping everything that I'm not using in a dry bag really helps keep everything dry if it rains out. So that big extremer bag, I can fit all my kites in there and hopefully only the kite that I use will get wet. And then I've also got a Patagonia Black Hole duffel bag. I've also got a roll top waterproof ski bag that I use for my camera equipment. Just that way everything, no matter what happens, no matter what the conditions are, everything stays dry. Next is really thinking about how to manage things at the end of the session, and in particular, how to manage sand. So when I land my kite, I've got the kite still inflated. If everything's super dry out, I may just fold it quickly there as I go and just knock the sand off as I go. If for whatever reason the sand seems to be sticking or if it's really fine sand, I may knock the sand off there on the spot and I may walk to maybe a grassy spot or maybe a concrete spot to fold things up there just to keep as much sand off as possible. Another option is just using another person. You can deflate, run to the wingtips, fold from the outside in and get that folded before the kite ever hits the sand. Another option might be a tarp. I don't use this as much, but you could lay out a tarp wherever you were. This is the Rumpel stash mat. And so it's basically like a tarp, uh, but it's less plasticky. That way, at least your kite doesn't get as much sand on it and maybe your tarp will. And then probably the, the other setup is if everything's wet and everything's really sandy. In that situation, while my kite is still inflated, I'll go back out and rinse it. I'll probably rinse my board, my booties, my harness, my wetsuit. I'll just rinse everything if everything's gonna be wet anyway, just to make sure that in that scenario, I'm not 
combining the wet with the sand. Cool, so that's the end of the session. Let's talk a little bit about packing things up into the car. The first thing I use here that's really helpful is the changing pad. So I have a Dekine changing pad that I'll put on the ground. I'll step out of my sandy booties into the changing pad. I'll dump my wetsuit, my harness, my vest, everything in there, I'll cinch it up. And then I'll take this changing pad and I'll toss it into a Pilgrim gear bucket. So it's just this large TPU waterproof bucket. Anything wet goes in there. It just keeps the water from spreading into the car. And then my last line of defense in my trunk is just this big rubberized pad at the bottom of the trunk just to keep water from getting in and getting the materials wet and stinking everything up. Yeah, so it takes a little bit more time, but it just saves you all of the cleanup if you get back to your tiny apartment and you've got sand and water everywhere. Cool, let's talk about what happens when I get back to the apartment. Dealing with the first scenario, which is, let's say it's not raining out, that's a little bit easier. I just put everything out on the patio. Wetsuit, harness, vest, everything goes on the patio. I may use some clamps if it's windy. I may use a Mahalo drying rack with the suction cup on a window if I need to use the other patio. I've also got some hangers for the wetsuit and for the wetsuit accessories. And that hanger kind of keeps the boots, the gloves, the hat, all vertical so that the just water will drain out of it. And then for my kites, yet again, if it's not raining out, I can go to the roof. I can spread things out up there. It really helps to have some sandbags or it helps to have some water bottles that you can use to weight things down since it's usually windy. I don't want my kite flying off the roof. I know it's not great for them to get a little bit of sun, but I'd rather them get some sun and get dried out before I put them away for storage. So let's talk about that second scenario. What happens if it's just dumping rain outside? I mean, there's nothing else I can do. To be honest, I'm mostly just gonna throw things in the shower and try to leave them for the next day or the day after when the rain stops. That's just the easiest choice. I've had a situation where it rained for like six or seven days straight, so I had no other options. In that particular scenario, I use the shower and the bathtub. This is where the suction hooks come in handy again. I use the suction hook with the Mahalo rack. That gives me some storage and some hanging options in the shower. I can also just use the, the coat rack. So the, the wetsuit rack, the wetsuit accessory rack, all of those things can set up and stick to glass. They can stick to the shower. They can stick to the walls in the bathroom. And I can get most things drying there. One extra tip here is I found a cheap USB Amazon fan. I can stick that in the neckline of the wetsuit to get some air circulating through the wetsuit. That'll speed up the drying process. Low, medium, high. And you can actually feel the air coming out the bottom. And then the absolute worst case scenario is that I have super wet kites and days of rain ahead of me. And so that's where I'm just gonna use the bath. I'm gonna take the shower rod. I'm gonna stick that in the middle of the bath. I'm gonna tension it up so that it holds that extra weight. I'm gonna throw the kites over the top and then I'll throw a big fan in the bathroom just to circulate some air. But that's really the worst case scenario. Last bonus tip, for those of you that just can't make the apartment work, if you have a studio and it's just way too small, you might wanna consider an external storage unit. Cool, hopefully that helps someone out. Please give me a thumbs up. If you thought I did something stupid or if I missed an obvious idea, put them in the comments down below. And thanks for watching.